starring Tommy Rettig as Jeff Miller. Jan Clayton as his mother, Ellen. George Cleveland as Gramps. And, of course, Lassie. What's crazy about it? It's a waste of manpower, that's what. You or me? You and me. Well, that's a man and a half. Well, there ought to be an easier way to do this. Look at us, two men doing a one-man job. Okay, I'll go over and hold the truck garden and you can finish this up. There's only 20 bushels left. Well, that's not what I meant. What I mean is, if we could hook my little gas engine up to this axle here, well, that'd free one whole man to do something else. So you and Porky can go fishing, for instance? Why not? Mom said I could until you said I had to help you work. A little work don't hurt anybody. Well, when it's not necessary. Well, I used to help my pa shell corn. Why can't you help me? Mom says you should use your head to save your feet. I was just thinking of an easier way. Uh-uh, trouble. Well, there goes your New England boiled dinner. Darn pesky animals. What Jim Teal wants them for is beyond me. Just look at this. Almost all our cabbage ruined. Yeah, cabbage, lettuce, broccoli, all trampled on. I'm going over and give Jim Teal a piece of my mind, that's all, and no charge. So can I come along? You're not hogtied, are you? Yes. I want to talk to you, Jim. George, what are you so worked up about? Sim Dan, don't see her, that's what. Well, don't tell me they broke out again. That's what I come over here to tell you. You want to see my garden. All chewed up and trampled on. Now I want to know what you're going to do about it. What are you going to do about it? Now simmer down, George. You'll live longer. On what? If I depend on vegetables this year, I'd starve to death. You got a perfect right to be mad, George, and I don't blame you a bit. Working morning till night and... What did you say? I said you had a perfect right to be mad, and I don't blame you. Oh, well, Jim, I, I, uh, I just want to talk about your goats, eh? Yeah, I know. They're a pesky nuisance. I almost wish I'd never bought them, but they sure look like a good proposition. That hospital in Capital City pays me a nice price for the goat's milk. But I just didn't count on needing that special fence. It's ordered. It'll be here in a few days. Well, what are you going to do about it, Jim? Uh, you can't let them run around loose that way. No. Well, first off, I got enough seedlings to replant your truck garden. I'll do that the first thing in the morning. Oh, you don't have to do that, Jim. Oh, I know I don't have to, but I want it. It'll make us both feel better. You see, I figured to use the herd to clear my north 40 while I was putting up the goat-proof fence in the pasture. But the way it's going, they'll cost me more than I'll make. That is, until I get the new fence in. Excuse me, Gramps? Well, it sure looks like you got a bull with a tail or, or a goat. Uh, Gramps? <laughs> uh, don't interrupt you. Please, Gramps, this is important. What is it? Could I talk to you for a minute in private? Now? I'm busy. Well, now, Gramps, please. All right. Excuse me, Jim. Sure. Jeff's got a proposition for you. Business proposition. Now, it's not going to cost me any money to listen, is it? No, sir. Well, Lassie's a good work dog, and I've heard it cheap before. So why don't you hire us to take care of your goats till you get the fence up? Well, herding goats and herding sheep are two different things. Well, we can do it, Mr. Teal. I know we can. It's a 24-hour job. That's nights, too. Gramps said it was OK. Oh, he did, huh? Well. I'll tell you what. I'll give you two dollars and a half a day. If the goats do any damage, you're responsible. And if that's okay with you, Ma, you can start right away. Now, how's that? 
It's a deal. Good. All right, Jeff, let's get going. So long, Mr. Steele. So long. Mm. Now, let me get this straight. You're going to shepherd Jim Teal's goats. Mm-hmm. And that means sleeping out with them. That's right. For how long? Oh, not long at all. Just till he gets his goat-proof fence up. How long? Oh, two, three nights, maybe a week. No. No, honey, I, I don't think so. I don't like the idea at all. Oh, why not, Mom? Just give me one single solitary reason why not. Well, for one thing, a boy your age belongs at home. You have to get your rest. Well, you wouldn't say no if I wanted to camp out tonight with Porky, would you? Honey, we are not talking about one night. We're talking about three or four or maybe a week. Well, what's the difference if I stay out one night or more than one or two or maybe a week? Hey, there's one other thing. It's a big responsibility taking care of a whole herd of goats. What if something were to happen? What could happen? Lassie will be there. Jim Teal said it was okay. And if it's okay with him, it should be okay with you. Gramps thought I could, if it was okay with you. Jeff, are you sure? Oh, you know I don't fib to you. Oh, I didn't mean that. I know you don't. I, I'm only... Well, then you mean I can? <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Oh, I got called Porky see if we'll go partners with me. Hello, Jenny. Would you ring the Brockways for me? I sure wish you'd go partners with me. Leastways, we can be together tonight and tomorrow night. That way it'll be fun. What are you gonna do with all that, though? You know the motor Woody has on his bike? Yeah. Well, he's gonna sell it, get a new one. He asked me if I wanted to buy his old one. If it's any good, then why would he want to sell it? Anyways, what does he need a new one for? Now you sound just like Mom and Gramps. That's what they said. Well, if it is any good, why would he want to sell it? Well, he just wants to get a new one, that's all. Hi, Mom, Gramps. Hi. Hi, Mr. Miller, Mrs. Miller. Brought you a snack. Oh, boy, food! <laughs> what was that I heard you telling Porky as we came up? Hmm? About what you were gonna spend your money on. Well, I told him I was thinking of buying Woody's motor. I thought we went all through that several weeks ago. Well, that's right, we did. But I still don't see any reason why I can't have it if I want to. Seems to me you're getting a bit too big for your britches, aren't you, young fella? Rams, couldn't this be just between Mom and me? As a matter of fact, it can't. I don't like the way you're playing me off against her. Now, you told your mom that I said all right. Well, what could she do? Say no? Please, Dad, let me. In the first place, Jeff, Gramps says that the motor's just not worth what Woody's asking for it. He says it's no good. But I've tried it out, and he hasn't. Now, wait a minute until I finish. At least let me... Please, Mom! Could I say something? Of course. Go ahead. Well, I figure it this way. It's my money. I've earned it. And if I'm big enough to earn it, I'm big enough to spend it any way I want to. Isn't that right? Well, I... I certainly see your point, Jeff. And I, I won't forbid you to buy the motor. You are getting old enough to make some of your own decisions. But, but I am your mother. And it's up to me to give you my advice. Now, if you don't want to take it always, well, that's up to you. I just hope you won't be sorry. Lassie, yeah, come here, on. girl. Come on. <laughs> There's a goat in trouble. Give me the rope, quick. He's stronger than I am, and younger, too. Come over here and give me a pull. It's gonna be an easier way to do this job. Uh, here we go. Uh, 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 now, take him over the herd before you take the rope off, will you? Okay. I 
I've got to go see Jim Teal. Will you, Mom, and Porky, take over for a couple minutes? Well, what do you think we've been doing? Oh. Go ahead. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Well, Jeff, I thought you were out mining the goats. Well, Mom, Gramps, and Porky took over for me for a while. I just came to ask you a question. Ask away. Well, as long as your field's cleared and your goats are safe, you don't care how I do it, do you? I guess that's about what I'm paying you for. Why? That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. <laughs> Jeff? Sir? The stuff is here for the fence. I'll have it up in three, four days. Just thought I'd let you know. Yes, sir. Good night. Mom! Mom! Rams! Porky! You call Jeff? <laughs> Me too! Yes, all of you. Come on. Did you see Jim Teal? Mm-hmm. Did you quit? Of course not. I just wanted to ask him something. Now, everything's okay now, so you just go on home, and thanks for helping me. Go home? Well, but, Jeff, you need us. Mom, everything's okay. I'll be all right. Yeah, but, Jeff, you see... Uh, you... No, Gramps, look, if I needed you, I'd tell you. Lassie and I will be able to take care of things. Oh, all right, son, if that's what you want. If I need help, I'll send Lassie. Huh? All right, honey, I certainly hope you know what you're doing. I do, Mom, I do. Now, how much longer is this going to last? Ah, uh, Jim said it wouldn't be over a week. Besides, it ain't doing him any harm, Ellen. I'd rather give him the $15 out of my house money and let Jim find somebody else to take care of his goats. And then maybe I'd get some sleep, too. And Lassie, that poor dog. Doggone it, Ellen, you're just trying to make babies out of them both. Did you notice last night? Well, she was so tired, she could hardly stand. She didn't even eat her dinner. If Jim Teal's fence material doesn't arrive today, I'm going to... Hi, Mom. Good morning, Graham. Oh, is breakfast ready yet? I must have overslept. Jeff? Hmm? Where have you been? In my room. When did you come in? Hmm? Stop that, Jeff. Answer me. I asked you when you came in. Last night. Well, where did you sleep? In my room. Uh, say, could I have some breakfast now before I get dressed? I'm awful hungry. Oh, yes, of, of course. And uh, when I'm through, I'd like to show you something over in Jim Teal's field. Both of you. Oh, certainly. Go wash your face and brush your teeth, and I'll have the eggs ready when you come back. Okay, Mom. Well, I wish I knew what this is all about. You'll see in just a minute. Now, I want you to promise me something. Don't look. Just keep looking at the ground till I tell you. Okay? All right. Now, come on. Okay. Now, look at the herd. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, I figured there should be an easier way to keep them from straying and to still have them clear the brush than the way we were doing. So I asked Jim Teal, and he said, okay. Now all I have to do is change their stakes a couple times a day. Oh, and he got his fencing material. He figures it'll take about four days to put it up. That means I'll be able to earn $15 without hardly any work. Well, that's using your head, boy. It was really Lassie that gave me the idea, the way she held the goat with the rope. Well, I guess progress is made by someone figuring out to the easiest way to do a tough job. <laughs> but I got a lot of chores to do now. Good boy. You coming, Ellen? Oh, Mom, there's one thing I don't understand. Oh, what is that, dear? Well, how come, even though you weren't happy about my deal with Jim Teal, that you and Gramps came out and helped me anyhow when I needed it? One thing just doesn't have anything to do with the other. Huh? Well, what I mean is, in, in any group of society, that is, people living together, oh, as small as a family or even as large as the nation, well, good neighbors and good friends offer to help in times of need. You coming, Ellen? I can't wait all day. J just a minute, Dad. Let me see. 
Do you remember that picture of the animals fleeing the forest fire? Oh, you mean the one where the foxes and rabbits and deer and wildcat are running together side by side? That's right. You see, in, in times of common danger, even traditional enemies lay down their arms. And well, you and I aren't exactly enemies, are we? I'll be home in a little while. All righty. Oh, honey. Who is it, Sparky? Well, no, as a matter of fact, for a change, it isn't. Who then? Jim Teal. Uh-oh. I hope one of the ghosts didn't break loose. Here, Lassie, guard it. Down it all. What's wrong now? Add a tobacco. You go shop and get me a can, will you? Uh, I don't mark it until tomorrow. Well, I might have enough to last until tomorrow if I'm lucky. Hello? Oh, Mr. Teal? Oh. Oh, yes. You did? Oh, swell. Then I'll come over right away. Okay, goodbye. Mom, that was Jim Teal. He got his fence up. Took four days, just like he said. He wants me to come over now so he can pay me. Is it okay if I do my chores later? Get them done, as all concerns me. Is it okay, Mom? Of course, honey. Run along. Thanks. Oh. Is it okay if on my way home I stop off and run an errand? Porky? Uh, no. Woody. Of course, Jim. Five, ten, fifteen. I sure wish I had a thought of that bright idea of yours. It would have saved me fifteen bucks. I'm sure glad you didn't. Well, so am I, as a matter of fact. Because I wouldn't have had time to go out and change them stakes every couple hours. What are you going to do with all that money? You know Woody Tompkins? Sure. Well, he's getting a new gas motor for his bike. I'm going to buy his old one. I suppose you know what you're doing, but if it was my money, I'd sure put it to a lot better use than that. Well, what could be better than having a motorbike? That way I won't have to pedal to school. Oh, Jeff, the way I see it, the good Lord gave a man feet for a purpose. Now, maybe it wasn't just for pedaling a bike, but it most certainly wasn't for sitting up there high and mighty and letting some little putt putting gas motor move you along. Well, gosh. And furthermore, there's no good to money unless it does some good. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I've done my share of preaching for the day. I gotta get into Capital City now and peddle my goat's milk. Well, thanks, Mr. Teal. Let us know if you need Lassie and me again. Oh, uh, thank you, Jeff. Both of you did a good job. Goodbye, Lassie. There's no good to money, unless it can do some good. Of course, a motorbike could do me good, but I don't think that's what he meant. It's a tough problem, girl. E -R -K. E -R -K. <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> Did I sound like Jeff? Yeah, kind of. Where is he? I don't know. He went over to Jim Teal's a couple of hours ago to collect his money. He's probably trying out that motor on his bike. Did he get back from Capital City? Oh, no, don't tell me he rode that bike all the way to Capital City. Oh, no, he went with Jim Teal. I was supposed to tell you, but I forgot. <laughs> Here he is now. Oh. Jeff, where have you been? Didn't Porky tell you? I forgot. You're a fine one. There's a present for you. For me? Mm. What'd I do? Plenty. Mom, this is for you. Sweetheart, what have you done? You look like Santa Claus. I feel like him, too. There's ropes to replace what I used up on the goats. Oh, Gramps, this is for you. <laughs> you need, need me to replace the rope, Jeff. Oh, I know I didn't have to, but I wanted to. Of course, Jeff. A lightning and slugger. Oh, thanks a million. It's a beaut. Oh, and my favorite perfume. Oh, how did you know I was practically out of it? I snooped. <laughs> And, Gramps, I heard you ask Mom to get you some more tobacco when she went to town. Well, thanks, Jeff. If you were ten years older, I'd share it with you. Jeff, you must have spent all of your money. Well, that's right, I did. But I had fun doing it. A lot more fun than any old motor. I hope you got something for yourself. You deserve it. Well, not exactly. But I did get something for Lassie. Lassie, this is for you. 
Oh, Pokey. Don't think I've forgotten about you. No, sir, not for one minute. There you are. It's Mr. Teal. Yes, I figured since you spent all your money and everybody else that you were kind of entitled to something for yourself. Here's a little souvenir that just arrived. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as it's okay with its ma, it's yours for keeps. Oh. Is it? <laughs> Lassie, look. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Teal.